Yeah, Lee Will is putting out some serious damage, but he's hit this player for Whites too, but that was the Shockwave Launcher too. That is a very, very important note right now. That was a very big audible cue of this is Shockwave Launcher, and you've hit him for Whites. Lee Will is Ooh. not letting this player get away because he wants that, and there it is. I was talking about it last game. Can you hold on to the Shockwave Launcher? That is the question, and no, for Brian here today, he cannot, and now goes in the hands of Lee Will, and someone that you just noted on is an aggressive player. There is nothing better to have in your back pocket if you're being aggressive than the Shockwave Launcher. Well, Kanata's got something to worry about. It's a player up there. Yeah, I, th I think that that elimination that Kanata lost early on to Pandosh in game one, I think he was feeling the burn. I think that charge shotgun just wasn't feeling as comfortable with him. Kanata, we've talked about how good... No! Oh, no! That one hurt anyone. By Martos here. We spoke about this yesterday. Being able to exit we into did. the box at a, a new clean angle that doesn't distort your shot. KJ Rop actually made that look too easy. Let's see how Stowe's going to set this one up, though, as we just talked about different ways to set up the fight here. He's got everything he needs to make the best of this one. He's looking to set up the angle, like the choke point, the cutoff there, to make sure he's got this enemy nice and trapped. He's going to make sure his weapons are ready for action as well. This is the distorted type of shot that we're looking for right here. When you send that crash pad straight in, it really does send you flying. So that can backfire either which way. On the other side, though, still looks like he's actually struggling to figure out how he's going to break into this. He doesn't realize he was just a little low below the elevation. There's the 180. So having to fully turn now, he's going to get rewarded with the biggest loadout of the game here. That means he snatched it straight off of the hands of the person that picked it up from Smelly Brian off the start. And it's worth pointing out, remember, Stowe is in first place, and you now have first place with the Shockwave Launcher in hand. He's now going to use it to push forward here. This player gets stuck here, trying to go into the vault. A little bit greedy, wants to pick up that extra loot that was lurking in the vault, but Stowe was lurking deeper in the field, and he has Caddy Corners on lockdown right now. It is, and it's worth pointing out as well for those of you who maybe missed the uh, the pre-show where we went through the, the kind of format of this one. Obviously, players who get top 50 are going to qualify straight through to the heats. There are four different days this is going to happen for in the FNCS qualifiers. The rest of the lobby, the other half, is going to qualify through consistency points. So these players who are consistently making finals and consistently playing well, but just falling short of that top 50, still have a chance to go into the FNCS heats as well. So keep an eye on them. They are names that are going to resurface. It's not just about that top 50. It's about can you play out all four days as best as possible yeah Zayt, Zayt's up there man you know he's he's got it going on he's he always it's crazy he gets into a grand finals and he somehow you know wriggles his way into top five it's why between Zayt between players like Aqua right these are players that are easily in some of the best in the world and for good reason as well but okay Hexy looking to take some walls now it's a compact on the other side we know the dangers of a compact SMG, that high fire rate in the hands of a player like Miro can be something to be worried about. But Miro hasn't been having quite the day. I wonder if he's looking to turn things around. This Lady Luck, is the fortune going to be in his favor right now? Playing a lot more passively than the previous game. This time he lets the opponent come to him and still, no, he falls short. 15 HP, that's one shot from the compact he needed. Trying to get into this slopey swamps. Does he take the wall? He doesn't. So he has to back out now. But that player inside there got shot from somebody else. There's a lot of sight lines on this fight. This is definitely a third party affair. This is going crazy right here. I'm just trying to absorb who's going to open the wall first. Okay, it's Charge V. Charge with the right camera angle. The textbook. Bye bye, Turkus from Cog Genesis with its drop kick through the window, making it look nice and easy. We call that a sweet chin music around my parts. <laughs> That was too <laughs> nice for him. One whole point for God Genesis. I'm just looking off class here. Just trying to see if he can catch a free shot. Now, remember, there is one player in the bush there. And yes, the shots are going to open up. So this is the indicator to class to also fire from the opposite oh. side. He's going to find virtual or ritual there without a single issue. But it's whoever was in That's... that bush there that did the majority of the work. Class does get in though, and it, it was a classy rotate from Class. A lot of players scared to make that early rotate because they're scared of getting beamed up. But the later you rotate, if it does get to the point where you get focused now, like this player that it looks like Class is setting up for, you have a lot less room to work with. You have a timer pushing you into zone. You can't go slow, and there it is proving uh, to Kaz, who is also a very a competitive veteran in his own right, who was waiting for that mobility, that the early rotate was definitely the play here. Fortnite game sense really matters, right? Your timing is probably going to save you the most more often than not so studying your gameplay studying your times rotates are going to play a huge mark another timing situation here is posed 
there I'm, one thing i'm looking for is storm surge right now there are six players above storm surge right there's six people that are right now getting as you said the storm god's wrath the lightning bolts are going to be falling and not only do they take damage it is a massive indicator for every player nearby you know that someone is getting taken 25 damage every second you need to try and capitalize on that and i think that's what booger's doing here he has found these players that are unfortunately below the storm surge threshold and there it is it clears out the lobby very quickly as soon as storm surge goes active and we are back down below 50 and now all these players have just gained one placement point too which is so crucial and booger has a very crucial rotate ahead of him does he use the crash pads does he use the launch pad but he is looking so good that guaranteed launch pad out of rickety rig is so important for these stacked end games it is instrumental to i believe arkham's success and now booger here taking up his mantle with the same drop spot that's right it gives you the free half and half out it gives you the free zone six rotate if you're even luckier at that point so this time around the launch pad being used here is going to find his nice safe nook here sets up a little 2x1 situated base giving him a little bit of protection and backing but now it's time to play for this end game this is where things are going to get real interesting i see gabe lighting up the feed gabe had a phenomenal day yesterday edging his way out into top 10 i saw acorn still alive i see clicks on heights here just to get you guys all caught up this is this is game three right we're in the halfway mark now this is where players the leaders start to solidify their placement and their way to the top but no one is safe as fast as you made it this far it's as fast as you can fall behind so consistency is going to be the name of the game right now there's a lot of pressure on those names at the top dreamhack finals usually the most stacked lobbies we've seen recently with also the booger cup too but this format so far we are seeing leave a much much closer margin at the top it, it comes down to the last game for almost every round of every region so it's going to be the halfway mark but there's no one stake here once they make it but stow as we last checked in had the uh, mythic shockwave launcher and he was in first place if he is still in that position he is looking very good here is trap killed on the high ground has a bit of mobility oh finds his opponent he had the extra builds to here sticks goes down wow. trap killed just having that memory that knowledge that he owns those builds and drops down and gets a very easy but very smart elimination and click sitting above him now knowing there is a shark beneath him and probably does not want to mess with that fight at all what a massive mistake not to secure the builds behind you you know he's going to be beating himself up after that one here's azers though who's on fire right now playing the floppers in the zone wait a second though he's going to get tagged by someone who decided to stay back late hold up if he gets tagged one time it's all over but he's going to find what he needs here and just like that he does have an opportunity to flop will he be able to grab the shields though on the way out this is what matters most now and no i think he juggled out the big shield on accident so he's going to have to do that as he catches up here yes he does manage to eat the flop and hit the air just in time 30 hp two big pots in the inventory that's going to need 10 seconds to fully capitalize and heal now there is not the wall or the wall behind him wasn't his so still not completely safe here on the other side booga already making his first way through to this rotate he's already into the safety of the zone trying to get even closer now though changing elevation as well playing a lot less of a dangerous zone walks into the build of another enemy now and cone controls it but nothing's gonna come from it Booger playing with higher layers as well. It might be because of those three crash pads. He wants to stay up a little bit higher so he has that elevation to try and get up. He needs to get up and over these builds, and there it is. If he's down in those lower layers, he can't do the play he just did, but almost falls into the box of another opponent, gets the shot through and takes him down. Booger picking up a big elimination on Texter. So right now we're seeing some big names falling in the feed. Coop went down again. Age is still in this after that sketchy rotate we saw earlier, but Booger, all eyes on him as he's trying to make his way through here with good uh, good material, good meds, and good mobility. As Bork just picked up three eliminations in the feed, if I saw that correctly that must have been a massive collateral or something as booger comes through and hits 42 shot in the back still prioritizing these higher layers looking in a really really good spot as he hits the solo tops and tries to save what little match he has left but 48 could be enough to close this one out without even a refresh if he plays it smart it's looking very likely and for someone like box too let's not forget he finished in the 90s yesterday so he's on to a good start here especially after dropping in the first two runs will this game three be the game that at least solidifies his way back up to the top from someone who's qualified two days in a row made it this far where others could not on the other side though booga 24 points and already nearing the top 20 as well this is looking like a very nice run for him here the crash pads nicely done as well just inching his way out putting himself in the best positions to capitalize on the players on height hold up he's putting some shots up he's not gonna find much though 
He's looking to keep hitting these rotates. He's doing so well with his crash pads. This high ground player must be getting so irritated. Boogie is like is. a fly that he just can't swat. It was Stowe. Stowe was in first place and he goes down. And now Booger has the shockwave launcher in his hand, proving that it can be beaten. You can overcome it with incredible players here. Booger using those crash oh pads to jump gosh. up against another elimination. A beautiful shot. Booger has some of the best aim in the game. This mythical charge shotgun is going to be put to use here. Not just the shockwave launcher as Booger commands this high ground. We've seen this before. Booger is is on his throne right now. He is on the high ground. Can he jump up into first? He wasn't in the tournament yesterday. He needs to stamp his authority on this game. It looks like he's got the loadout to do it. But for Builds Monster, he is running low right now. Kid Smithic Shocking can do so much damage. You saw it hit for 100 just a second ago. But hold up. Now he has the Shockwave Launcher as well to back him up. So this is the perfect loadout here to secure the Victor Royale. And all he has to do is continue to maintain the pressure and send these players flying. With the material count though so low, this is desperate. Even Booga, the World Cup champion, is not a free position. Not just yet. He needs the shot. Ooh. And yes, he's going to find it. One more left now. He's going to try and send this player out. He takes massive amounts of fall damage though. Can he send this player going? Yes, there it is. Now, three ticks in the zone. Fall damage might be the difference. And yes, he is going to fall. He takes himself out. No. Booger goes down to fall damage. Felix on 10 health. One more tick would have done it. He manages to throw. Currently, Stowe still holding it down. But look at this. World champion, Booger, stepping up to play. Saying, you know what? I would like this dessert now. Right. And while Shy Wager's joke was a little quiet.